So here are some 3D printed items. This is the holder with the new item pushed through. It's one of these mending plates that you can get right here at Home Depot. And they push through and it gives you a metal place so that when this goes in here, it just locks in place. As you can see, it's not coming out of there. And that holds these pins. These can be go in here. Different sizes fit on different pipes, and you can go down and mark your different pipes. And uh, they're nice and tight, so they don't wiggle around. But they fit both sizes, even the ultra fine Sharpie pen will go in. These are actually for a smaller pipe, but I have some set up that go very deep. Um, this goes all the way up to a six inch pipe. Uh, this is just the version that has nothing up here, and I guess it's, there's something called a Wixi. I think that's the name of it. Uh, this is an Acura remote, but people have been talking about a Wixi version, so if you want to, you can just use the magnet on there. Maybe you can put something in there. These straps are for uh, elastic Velcro that can go over and hold that in place, or go around here and hold it in place for um, holding on the pipe. But for me, this is the version I want to use because it's, uh, once again, you can go over to here. This goes around the pipe. So that's that. And also, here's kind of a item I was working on it and I noticed I forgot to put this actual part on the design when I started to 3D print it. So this is kind of an interesting thing is it shows you the kind of the inside pattern it prints. So it's hollow but has a structure in there and you can make this bigger or smaller or totally solid. Like this part I made completely solid, the part that bolts on here. But it doesn't use as much material and I don't know if all 3D printers of this um, type that are not very expensive, I guess I should say, have this ability. But uh, the Finia gives me uh, four different options for this, all the way from solid to basically hollow. And this kind of shows you how this works, is that uh, this slides in the end down there, as in here. And uh, that's how this fits. And you can see it's a good tight fit. I mean, it's the deal. And I'm scratching my fingernail across there both ways. And you can see that's perfect fit up. It's the same with these. You know, they're a uh, good fit up. That's a, There's even two screw holes in there if you wanted to screw these down. But they're so tight it doesn't matter. So anyway, that was just kind of, you can kind of see how that is. That's the pattern there and how this works. This just slides in this way. And locks in place and as you can see even on this one there's a place where I could screw in some flathead screws in there if not that works great go around like there these are kind of a little bonus thing I thought I'd show you is these are the little ant bait traps the way they work is you take 50% uh, borax and 50% a mixture of um, honey and water um, Actually, I, I think it's more 50% honey, 10% water, and it's a 40% borax. So you, you mix the warm water and borax and kind of get that into a solution, and then you mix that with the warm honey. And then you pour it in on both sides here, and it comes up to this little level of the little feeders. And the ants can go in here on the edges, and they can also kind of walk across here if they want to, to a certain point. The lids, before I had them twist on, but when the honey would get in here and um, they would dry after a year of sitting there, sometimes this 3D printed stuff is not as strong as normal injection molded plastic, so it would pop off. So I just found that it works just as good to do this. If you have a pet or something and you need to slide this under the fridge, that's why they're flat. You can put a rubber band on there and there's still a gap in there. The reason for this gap is, is that the ants are kind of going along and there's a trail. 
you take this, you just set this right over the pheromone trail and it doesn't really screw them up because the whole idea is to get them to take the bait back to the nest. And uh, this stuff works great. I mean, we have we had terrible, terrible infestations for a couple of years. We were just all summer, everything. They were everywhere into the cereal boxes and everything. With these, you set these down on that first day that they come in with the trail, you'll find them going to the cat food or something like that. You set this down, 24 hours later, you don't see another ant for the rest of the year. Nothing. And that was the problem, is that you'd only, we'd use these once and they'd sit around with that honey that would kind of be in there. And that's why the twist ones didn't work so well. So I just remade these. And these are on GrabCAD too. I made these as a gift. So if you want to, I, I, the, the lids are kind of loose now. You know, they don't fall off or anything. But they're kind of loose right now just because once the honey gets in there, I made them so that they twist just enough to kind of loosen them and they pop off. There's some little items there that keep them from twisting all the way. But if, you, if you're if you worried about it, you know, um, you can put a little rubber band on there and they don't come off and it still leaves the trail there to go over. But I don't think you'll need those. I just have those for shipping. So anyway, that's kind of the whole thing. I uh, thought I'd just show you that new item there. And that's very stable. I don't think I'm gonna need anything to go over here, but I definitely want that nice flexible um, Velcro that, you know, it's whatever on one side and one on the other and you can flip it around here and tighten it and then go all the way through and come around and tighten this around a pipe but it should work really well so it's kind of a yeah you get your digital angle there just kind of kind of flips over the other way as you can see so it's really nice on this is that you can mark it on the top of the pipe either scratch with this or punch with this. You can pull this out then hit it with a punch or just scratch with this. The nice thing is that when you flip the pipe over you can take this and flip it under and slide this this little piece here. No. They're, they're very tight. So You can slide this under to where you did the punch up above and move it till you're perfectly on zero and then uh, you have the pipe perfectly up. Then you pop this up here perfectly zero and uh, you can pull this out, hit it with a punch, or hit it with the thing, and you have two holes on each side. But mostly what I use it for is in a big long pipe. I just stick it on here, zero it out, either scratch a little scratch or make a little mark, go down way down to the other end of the pipe, and it hasn't, the pipe hasn't moved, and then I can put it at zero ten, and then I know I have my items. A lot of times I have to bring off stuff at, at a, you know, a 50 degree angle or 45 or, or whatever, but it's pretty handy. So, well, I'll quit rambling. That was about it.